So when you go through different tribulations, it's like when you go through different tribulations, it works in the charge of patience, man. All right? And patience experience. And when you go through different tribulations, when your patience is tried, then you gain, you start to gain experience. Right? And experience hope. Let me get one more preset real quick. All right? Because patience leads to hope. <clears throat> so you got to have patience. So people think patience is a thing or not. We don't, you really don't have to have a lot of patience. All right, well, hold on. This is Romans chapter 8 and 24. For we are saved by hope, for hope that is seen is not hope for what they may see it. Why do we yet hope for? If we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? So your patience has to lead to hope, and you're saved by hope. So if you don't have any patience, then the Lord said you don't have any hope, man. All right, it all connects back together. You gotta have patience in your last days. You gotta appreciate it. Huh. It's the book of uh, the classic. <clears throat> it's Galatians chapter 5, and verse number 22. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, patience, long suffering, gentleness, meekness, uh, it's like goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there's no law. So, and that's, and that's the milk that brothers should be going into is the patience. Right, it's good to go on the the uh, the meat, the bread, etc. But again, you always want to focus on and get back to the sincere milk and the word, because by the milk, that's how you're gonna get saved. Brother's not gonna get saved like we always say all the time. Brother's not gonna get saved by knowing the end of breakdowns. Right. The milk, namely, is what's gonna save us. I got one more precept. Um, Second Peter chapter two, chapter one. Second Peter chapter one, verse number five. It's the book of Second Peter. Right. It's the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, and verse number 5. It says, And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. So when you have all of these attributes as leading up to godliness, bro. right? Verse 7, it says, And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Jumping down to verse 10. It says, Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. So the Lord said, If you got these attributes, you shall never fail. He didn't say if you know the end that breakdown of Revelation, you can break down every chapter in Zechariah, uh, second address, chapter 10, 11. The Lord they don't, the Lord didn't say that. No, he said, if you have these things, these attributes, this milk, you're never going to fail. So the Lord already gave you the cheat code to life. I had to get the kingdom. I mean, it's plain upon tables. You're never going to fail if you have patience, brotherly love, and exercising godliness. Aren't you good? Um, that's right. All right, that's right. We're going to look at you. Like, same with the classic chapter, second, so right, chapter 2, verse 3. Yeah, how can you fail when you have patience, man? The Lord has patience with you every single day. You will, If you're watching this video, the Lord already had patience with you, man, because you probably went off and the Lord allows you to watch that, to watch this video or whatever video. The Lord had patience with us. He's allowing us to do this right now, man, right through his grace and his mercy. Right, it's right, chapter 2, and I'm going to start at verse 4. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, it take cheerfully. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. You can be changed to a lower state. You are once in a higher state and the Lord changes you to a lower state by bringing different tribulations upon you. The Lord said you got to be patient when that happens. Don't panic. Don't start to cry. You know, I, you know a lot of people that start to cry, right? They, you know, they start to get, you know, um, what's the word, right? Uh, 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 impa hey, impatient, 
right? They start to get impatient. They start to do their own thing and they start to wander off and follow off after their own mind, but they don't wait on the Lord, right? And it says, and it says, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in, a, uh, in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way of right and trust in him. And that also goes back into trust because be patient. I mean, you have trust, man. Right in, in Yahweh Hashem Yahusha. Let me go to the book of Sarah, uh, Slaki Song, chapter 37, verse 3. Right? So if you're patient, you're going to have trust in what the Lord is telling you to do. Man. Right? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 37, and verse 3. It says, Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto him, unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass, man. So if you're patient, you won't trust in the Lord, and he's going to bring everything to pass. He's going to bring the desires of your heart. You just got to do what he says, man, and have patience in what he's going to do what he says. And you can't put the Lord on a timeline. You can't say, Lord, can you do this for me in 10 days or in 10 days? If you don't do it, then I'm just going to do it myself. That's not off. You can't do that. Right. And we have men in the scriptures that try to put the Lord on a timeline. Let's go to Judith 8. All right. We're going to go to Judith chapter 8. Man. All right. This is Judith chapter 8. Let me start at verse 12. Now, this is what Judith said to Ozias and the rest of the ancients of, of Israel when they tried to put the Lord on a three-day timeline to see if he was going to help the city or not. And which was she said, and now who are you that have tempted God this day and stand in the stead of God amongst the children of men? So who are you? Right? We tell the Lord, well, yeah, if you don't do this, you try to bargain with the Lord. You can negotiate with the Most High. Like the Most High is just some person to negotiate with. And it says, and now try the Lord Almighty, but you shall never know anything. For you not, cannot find the depth of the heart of man, neither can you perceive the things that he thinketh. Then how can you search out the Most High that made all these things and know his mind or comprehend his purpose, right? Nay, my brethren, provoke not the Lord our God to anger. And that's what we'll pro I will provoke the Most High to anger, man. Everything is based on his timeline, right? It says, for he would not help us within these few days. He had power to defend us when he will even every day or to destroy us before our enemies. Do not bind the counsels of the Lord our God, for God is not a man that he should that he may be threatened. Neither is he as the son of man that he should be wavered. Then, therefore, let us wait for salvation of him and call upon him to help us, and he will hear our voice if it please him. So, amen. If it please the Most High, then the Most High will come when he will. That's just the going back to you have to have patience in the Lord, man, because everything's built on his timeline. He's going to do what he wants to when he will. You got to keep calm. And like the brother going into, there's no better um, examples than our forefathers. I'm going to get this quick precept in Job chapter 42 and verse, I'm sorry, verse 11. We get to the point. Job chapter 42, verse 11. It says, then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been, it's like they had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure a lot of people read the book of Job. You read the book of Job, you know what Job went through. You know the trials and tribulations that the Lord put him through, right? And it was bad. Nevertheless, Job had to endure that. Now, if Job didn't have patience, Job would have denounced the Most High. Job would have fell off the truth. Job would have uh, lacked faith. Right, let me get this quick preset real quick. Right. Ultimately, uh, ultimately, um, Faith is the trying of your patience. Mm -hmm. Let's get the book of James. Let me get this quick precept. James 1 to verse number 3. James 1 to 3. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So also, if you want to build up your faith, your patient, I mean, uh, build up your faith, you got to have patience. You can't have one without the other. Mm -hmm. 
Again, because uh, faith is the things hoped for and the substance of the things not seen, like I say in Hebrews 11 chapter. So what did Job have to have? Job had to have patience. Job had to have faith. Going back to that, uh, Job, it's Job chapter 42 and verse uh, 12. It says, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. And the brother brought out Sirach, the second, Sirach, the second chapter. And again, it's basically, it's all about patience. Why? Because again, the most high is going to increase you in your latter end. Um, that's, that's plain. You get it. Um, and we're going to just Romans chapter 15, verse 4, because the brother, you know, brought out one of our forefathers. Hey, Sirach 44, 1, the Lord said, let us pray his famous money. Right, it says, for whatsoever, this is Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever things were written of four time were written for our learning. So these things were written for our learning. The Lord literally put through put Job through all manner of hell, trials, and tribulations. For what? For us to learn as a people now, man. It says that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Right. It says now that God of patience and consolation grants you to be like minded one towards another, according to Yahshua Mashiach. It says the God of patience and consolation. The Lord is the God of patience, man. Right. And you see how that hope connects back to that patience and you're saved by hope, man. So you have to have patience. But let's continue that on Job, man. Right. Let's go to Job chapter. I'm just like James chapter five. Uh, let me see where I want James five and seven. And it says. Is the book of James, chapter 5, and verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. For the precious fruit of the earth, uh, shlake, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. So at the same way that we have patience for the second coming of our Lord, that's the same way the Lord is waiting for us to get right through the spirit, man. Right, we're the we're the fruit of the earth. You don't just pick the fruit whenever you feel like picking the fruit. It has to be right. As the texture has to be uh, just right. Right, it can't be sour. It can't be too good. I mean, uh, too sweet. It can't be too sour. It gotta be just right. So when the Lord is waiting for us to get right, we waiting for the Lord to come back. The Lord got patience, just like we have to have patience through the Spirit. Right, and it says. And have long patience for it. It's not to say the Lord has some patience. The Lord has long patience for it. You don't think the Lord wants to come back and wants to save his people, man. Right? As much as we want to get out of here, man. But at the time, it has to be right. And only the Lord knows the time. Right? And it says, until you see the early latter rain. Verse 8. Be also patient. Establish your minds. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. So the Lord told us to be patient and establish your heart, establish your mind. Because the Lord's coming back swiftly, man. Didn't the Lord say 2 Ezra chapter 14, verse 10, get the house in order? The Lord gave us certain directions on what we should do before he comes back, man. Right? There's more stuff that we can do uh, that we can get done before the second coming of our Lord. Right? We can do more works for the for the most high. Right? We can add on more godly attributes, man. Right? So instead of just sitting here being impatient about certain things in our life, or even certain things uh, regarding the second coming of our Lord, we can, hey, this increase through the spirit, man. So when he comes back, hey, you know, he uh, like is unto our fruit, right? And it says, verse 9, I even jump to verse 10. So let's read about our forefathers. Take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord, an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience, right? Read about Ezekiel. Right. Read about when Ezekiel had to uh, um, uh, his wife had to die man, and he had to do the work the next day. All right. Isaiah had to walk naked. man. Hey, imagine laying on your side for for, for, <laughs> for all those days, man. This laying on Ezekiel, the fourth chapter, you got to lay on your side to represent the iniquity of your nation. Man. Right. Hey, that's patience, man. Right. I know his arm fell asleep. Right. He had to kind of do this. And, he, and the Lord said, get back on thy side. And he had, to, <laughs> he had to get back on his side, man. And then turn around and then do the same thing for another few days, man. You see that? That's patience. The Lord didn't ask you to do that. All you did was say, read today. Uh, right? And you talk about, oh, I gotta read today. Brother, brother, get on your side and see if you want to read now. Right? <laughs> hey, and it says, verse 11, but we count the slot in. And it says, an example, uh, example of suffering, affliction, of patience. Verse 11. James 5 and 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure 
you have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. So the Lord is very pitiful. He's of tender mercy. We just read, really just read about that, man, in the book of Job, man. That's the end of the Lord. Let me get one more precept in the book of Job. Jonah fled from doing the work in Nineveh because he knew the Lord's going to have mercy on Nineveh. Long suffering. And that's the attributes we got to have, right? It's the book of Jonah. Chapter two, chapter four, sloppy. It's Jonah chapter four and verse two. And being a patient also means being slow to aim, right? It's Jonah four and two. And it says, and he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Yahweh, was not this my saying when I was in my country? Therefore, I fled before the unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repentance thee of the evil of men. It's like and repentance thee of the evil. So the Lord slowed to anger. The Lord repented him of the evil, man. Right? The Lord didn't just, you know, just destroy Nineveh right then and there. No, he allowed them to repent. He allowed him, and once they got right, he said, okay, he, he stayed his anger from the other one. So if this is our God, and these are the attributes of our God, how much more us in these last days? You got it. Come for the Lord. Come. Like the brother was saying again, you got to go back to our forefathers. What our forefathers are, our righteous forefathers, are perfect examples and uh, guidelines of how we should be moving to this day. It's Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Now I'm going to get the book of 2 Samuel chapter 16 and verse number 6, going into King David. Why? Because King David, he was what? He was perfect. King David is the elect. King David is the righteous. In 2 Samuel 16 and verse number 6, it says, And he cast stones at David and at all the servants of the king, it's like of King David, and all the people and all the mighty men were on his right and on his left. So this man, uh, this man Shammai, or, or, or Shimei, right? he's casting stones at, at the king, at King David, who's blameless. He's throwing stones at him and his servants. Now, David could have easily just looked at Abishai and said, hey, go ahead and do your thing. And Abishai would fill upon Joel, right? The sons of Zariah. Now, David could have did that. And David could have been in the right because this man is literally casting stones, being bold on the left-hand side of the king. Verse 7, it says, and thus said Shemai, when he cursed, come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou man of Bilaal. So he's calling David a bloody man. Verse 8, the Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And, like and the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. Behold, thou art taken and thy mischief because thou art a bloody man. So this man, he's just talking. He's just railing on David. Just going uh -huh. in. Verse 9. It says, Then said Abishai, the son of Zariah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Now Abishai was going to go. Abishai didn't have patience. Abishai said, hey, hey, you stepping towards my king. Hey, king, and let me go ahead and do my thing. Right? He's going to say that. And read it on, it says, let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. So this man is begging King David to go and kill this man for him railing on King David. Now, King David could have said, yeah, you know what? He is calling me a bloody man. Yeah, he is calling me a dead dog. Yeah, he was, you know, that rock, when he kind of threw it, it did hurt me. But guess what? King David had patience. King David had compassion. What also comes with patience is compassion. Right, again, the Lord said in 2 Peter, the first chapter, if you had these things, you shall never fail. Right, read it normally. It says, verse, um, verse 10, read it normally. So let him curse. Let me read the top of verse 10. And the king said, what have I to do with you, ye sons of Zariah? So let him, slack it. So let him curse, because the Lord hath said unto him, curse David, who then Say, wherefore hast thou done so? So the Lord simply told him, hey, let the Most High take care of it. It's like uh, David told him, let the Most High take care of it. Why, again, that all comes with patience. You may not see it. You may not be able to comprehend it, but through your faith and your patience, guess what the Lord is going to, uh, over time, have it manifest. I want to finish that on, uh, finish that off in James, the first chapter. 
James chapter 1 and verse number 4. It says, let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. So the Lord said, you got to let patience have her perfect work. Patience knows what she's doing as long as you have it and keep her in your mind. All right, let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 27 and verse number 34. All right, Matthew 27 and verse 34. Because again, our king and our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, the righteous, he had patience. Right, this is Matthew chapter 27 and verse 34. It says, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gold, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be filled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them and among my vesture that they cast lots. And sitting down, they washed him there. So yeah, Abishai is getting crucified at this time. Right, verse 37. And set up over his head his accuser ring. This is Yahabashai, the king of the Jews. So imagine you're about to die for a nation of people, and they're still scoffing at you. Say this guy, this guy, this guy the king of the Jews. All right, you want to say, let me go ahead and write it over there as we watch him die slow. That's disrespectful. Again, to the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the same man that created you from the foundation. They're doing this to this man, right? And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be in the spirit when you're reading this, and feel the spirit that you shot had to be in. All right, verse thirty-eight. And then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and the other on the left. I'm going to jump down uh, to verse 42. It says, I'm going to start at verse 41. It says, likewise, also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and the elders said, he saved others. Himself, he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we believe him. So imagine you have the power to actually do that. All these things that not the king of Israel. I right, watch this. You get off the cross. Right. Their whole time, the prophecy is broken. Right. The whole time now, Israel got to get destroyed. Because right. we don't have uh, nobody to uh, die for our sins. And again, the Lord, he had to have an extreme amount of patience and long suffering to be able to endure that. Imagine you can do it. You have the power. You have the strength. But guess what? You don't. Why? Because again, Yahushua, he was perfect. Yahushua knew, uh, knew that that was Satan the whole time. Again, patience has a perfect work. So for Yahushua to stay in bold, for Yahushua to stay in the spirit, ultimately, guess what? We're still here to this day all because our Lord had patience. If Yahushua didn't have patience, nobody would be here. But again, through the grace and mercy of Yahushua, through his perfectness, we're still here to this day. All because of his patience. And patience is what got us here to this day. Through the spirit. Alright. I you got it. I got a uh, free check. Alright. We go to 1 Samuel. Alright. Just the book of 1 Samuel. Chapter 28. 20, yeah, 28. I'm sorry. Verse 5, 3. Now Samuel was dead. And all Israel had lamented him. And buried him in Ramah. Even in his own city. And Saul had put away those... Um, had familiar spirits in the woods out of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shinnom. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Geboah. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. And Saul inquired of the Lord. The Lord answered him not neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul to his servants, Seek me a woman that the familiar spirit that may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that have a familiar spirit and endure. So this man saw, as soon as he got afraid, he reached out to the Lord. The Lord didn't answer him because of what he'd been doing before. And instantly his mind thought to do wickedness, man. His mind thought to go off, man, and seek a familiar spirit. The Lord said, You can't deal with uh, well, witches and wizards, man. All right? Well, my son would say, Well, no, but the Lord didn't answer. What you expect him to do? We read Job chapter 13, verse 15. He said, Though he slay me, yet will I still maintain my trust in him? That's called patience. You just don't go and break God and the Most High's commandments because he doesn't operate when you want him to operate, man. Right. That's not how the Lord works. All right? Let me go to the book of First Chronicles. Let me start the second, um, First Samuel chapter 30. Let's see what happened with David. First Samuel chapter 36. And David was greatly distressed. 
For the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. That's what David did. King David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Right? He didn't get mad or sad after, you know, the Amalekites came and took all their possessions away. He's like, black man. Right? But hold on. He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Right. And it says, and David said to Abiathar, the priest, and Abimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, saying, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and withal fail, recover all. So while David's too busy encouraging himself in the Lord his God, Saul is too busy being afraid of the damn nasty Africans. And you see the difference, man. The hell are you afraid for? You got the God of Israel on your side, man. Right? Let me go to the book of uh, John, chapter 11. You got to have patience, man. That's a very big attribute. Man. Right? People say, I don't, I don't got patience for that. And they say it as if it's nothing, man. That means you don't got no hope. I'm going to start saying that. You don't got patience, you don't got hope. Right? What do you mean by that? <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, man. You got to have hope in this thing. Right? It's John, chapter 11. And verse 16, all right, I'll start verse 15. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there for the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, right? This is Thomas Didymus, one of the apostles, um, or one of his disciples. It says, which is called Didymus unto his fellow disciples. Let us also go that we may die with him. And he said, he going to Jerusalem. And he said, he has, hey, if you go there, you'll die. Hey, let's go to Jerusalem and, let, and we're going to die with the Lord, man. That's what he said. He was willing to die for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh right, in Jerusalem. All right, let's see what happened when the Lord went to Jerusalem. Let's go to the book of Mark. <clears throat> all right, let's go to the book of Mark chapter 14. Let's see what happened when all hell broke loose. Let's see if they were still ready to die for the Lord. All right, this book of Mark chapter 14 and verse 43. I started at verse 45. And as soon as he was come, he go straight away to, uh, to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. So this is when Judas portrayed the Lord. And they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Yahushua answered and said unto them, Are you come out against a thief with swords and with staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you took me not, but the scriptures might must be fulfilled. So they came to take the Lord, right? And it says, and they all forsook him and fled, man. So hold on. Where was Thomas at when he said, let's go die with the Lord? They forsook him and fled. Everybody forsook the Lord and fled, man. Right? And so when all hell broke loose, when adversity and affliction came, everybody forsook the Lord. You can't be like that, man. When Saul, when he got afraid, he forsook the Lord, man. Right. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Right? You can't be had that spirit. You got to have that patience, man. Right, and go to Psalms 37, 34. Right, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 37. And verse 34. And it says, Wait on the Lord and keep his way. So the Lord commanded you to wait on him and keep his way. Right, and it says, And he shall exalt him to inherit the land. And when the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see. I want to see it, man. But I can't see it on my own accord. I can't say, man, we got to cut off the wicked now so I can see what it looked like now. No, it ain't time to see what it looked like, brother. You spend a, you spend a lot of days and hours in jail, right? You got to look, for, you got to wait for the Lord. And he's going to cut them off, man. And he's going to exalt you to inherit the land, man. Right? And yet he passed away. And it's like he... Verse 35, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yet I saw him, but he could not be found. And Lord said, hey, uh, King David, through the Spirit, said, hey, in that time, you going to look for the wicked. They're not even going to be there, man. You understand, when you have patience in the Lord, the Lord going to bring a lot of uh, uh, your things to come to pass twice told, man. Right? More than you could even expect, man. That's why you have patience in Yahweh Shem Yahshua, because he can do all things, man. Right. right? On his own time. You got it. Come, I want to get this in. Uh, first Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter ten and verse number. Uh, I'm gonna start at verse three. Again, going back at our forefathers, because again we got righteous examples. Also got wicked examples on how not to do, like the brother was bringing. Now things on uh not to do when the Lord tried you, when your patience is actually being tested. Right, it's first Corinthians chapter ten and verse number three. 
It says, and all did eat meat, sloppy, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink of the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Hamashiach. Jump it down to verse, uh, let me get to the point. I'm going I'm to uh, keep jumping. Verse 7, verse 6. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. So we read 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. It basically sums up what Israel went through in the wilderness and how wicked we were and how the Lord kept giving us a chance at the chance after we went off time after time after time. Now the Most High, he had an extreme amount of patience on our people in the wilderness. Right. I mean, he literally brought us up out of the land of Egypt, delivered us with a mighty hand. Mighty hand. Sent, I mean, he said, Moe, split the sea, sent the, sent the plagues, and he killed the Egyptians to top it all off. And on top, he, he sent the UFO before us, a spaceship. And we left out of stuff. We had, we had, we had everything. Yeah, guess what? Our forefathers, they still murmured. They always had something to say. So the Lord said what? Uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 6. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And we read this chapter, uh, it really it, it going to it. I'm going to keep reading verse number 7. Neither be idolaters as were some of them as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000 men. Jumping down to verse. I'm jumping down to verse 11. It says, now all these things happen unto them for examples and they are all written for an hour and for an hour admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. So we got to take heed to these things lest we fall. Again, read the accounts, learn what to do, learn what not to do. Verse 12. I mean, uh, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to a man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. So the most high, he's not going to uh, put a challenge before you that he know that you can't bear. If you've been doing what you're supposed to do. Again, that's where patience and faith comes in. You got to have the precepts like the mind when you're going through tribulation and trials. Right? To remember, okay, I know the most high. He's not going to put me through nothing that I can't handle. So I know I can overcome. Right? Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things by Shema Mashiach. I was shot. You got to always have these precepts and remembrance when going through these trials and tribulations. Let's go to the book of uh, First Samuel. The brother quoted it. I'm going to um, get it. First Samuel chapter 30 and verse 1. Again, David, perfect example. It says, And it came to pass, when David and his men were came to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag and smit Ziklag, and burned it with fire. So you had Esau came and burnt the land. It says, and had taken the women captive, and were therein, they slew not any, neither great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So they spoiled the land and took the women, right, and the children. Verse 3. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken. So imagine you and your guys coming back, and the whole land is burned with fire. Right, your children, your kids aren't there. Right? And mind you, David's the king at this time. So ultimately, all this leads back on King David and his judgment call. Right. right, verse 4. And it's like, then the people, it's like, then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Right, rightfully so. You're coming back to the land and it's burnt and your wives and your children are gone. Right, they cried. Verse 5. And David's two wives were taken captives. I handle them, <clears throat> the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him. So imagine the same guys that you go to war with, that you chill with, that you praise the Lord with, 
These same guys when all hell broke loose, they spake of killing their own king. Right. Right. A man that hasn't done any wrong to them, a man that's whose heart is perfect with the most high, right? Something goes bad, and now guess what? They forget the precepts. And now they're thinking of stoning their own king. Right? It says, and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him. And you gotta put yourself in King David's mindset. King David's already grieving over what happened. On top of that, his own men are trying to backdoor him, are thinking about backdooring him. And he knows this. Right, reading on, it says, because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man and his sons for his daughters. But David encouraged himself and the Lord his God. So while all hell is breaking loose, David's mindset was on the Lord the whole time. And it said, well, he encouraged himself and the Lord his God. Now, what if David didn't have patience and didn't think of the precepts have a temperance or a long suffering? David could have made a false judgment call. Right. But guess what? He encouraged himself and the Lord his God. I got, uh, I got one more. Huh. It's the book of Exodus chapter 32 and verse number one. It says, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go over before us. For this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we were not what is become of him. And again, our forefathers, they didn't have patience. Again, read First Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Read the book of Exodus all the way through um, Deuteronomy. And see how our forefathers lacks all manner of faith and all manner of patience. Right, Moses was up for the mount for 40, for 40 days. At this time, when you read Exodus 32, the 40 days wasn't even fulfilled in the, uh, in the beginning um, of the chapter. But guess what? Let's go to verse... Let's go to verse... Let me see. Let's go to verse number... Let's go to verse 9. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may consume them, and I will make thee of a great nation. And the Lord had all right to do that. Imagine, again, the same people you delivered out of the land of Egypt, they spin your face. And the Lord said, you know what, I'm going to just kill off these people. I'm going to build up another nation with you. But guess what? Moses had love and compassion on his people and patience. Let's see what Moses said. Let's go to uh, let's go to verse 30. It says, And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord. For adventure I shall make an atonement for your sins. Right, and we uh, read a little bit up early in the chapter. Moses, he, he broke down a calf, made it into dust to make the children of Israel drink it. After that, he got, guess what? He had compassion on his people. And again, the Lord had all right to destroy our people. But uh, reading on, verse 31, it says, And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, O oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made their gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blow me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. So Moses said, even though this people went off, hey, Lord, take my life instead and let the whole nation live. And that's real compassion and real love that Moses had on his people. Moses didn't have to do that. Moses didn't have to say, you know what, hey, Lord, hey, you're right. These people live wicked. So I do, I do got to deal with them, don't I? No, Moses, what he do? He offered his own, his all. he offered himself. To be an atonement for the whole nation to take away the sins of the nation. All right, let's get this in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, and verse number 3. Verse, verse 2. It says, Thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. So ultimately, the Lord, he even put us through that trail of the wilderness for 40 years to try us. Again, like we read in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the Most High is not going to try us over something that we can't handle. Right? The children of Israel, they was capable of enduring those 40 years. Right. But guess what? <clears throat> through their uh, lack of faith and their lack of patience in the Lord, everybody that came out of Egypt eventually got cut down and didn't even answer the promised land. A whole new generation 
had to answer the promise land because these people was wicked. They went off. Right, but you got it. Wow, this is Deuteronomy chapter 3 and verse 22. I saw verse 24. I saw verse 23. And it says, And I besought the Lord at that time, saying, O your Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servants thy greatness in thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy might? See, when you look at our forefathers talking to the Most High, they knew how to speak to the Lord. They knew how to pray right. to the Most High, man. Right. right? They knew how to, I mean, Moses convinced the Lord to stay his hand from destroying all of Israel, making a new lineage through him, like his brother was bringing out, man. The, the King David knew how to speak to the Most High and pacify his great anger, man. But Moses is now inquiring again to the Lord. He said, what, uh, what uh, works can another God do that's just like you? Right? You, hey, you're a God in heaven and in earth, and according to thy works and according to thy might. And when you want to get something, you know, you kind of ask you, you kind of tell your pops, hey, man, you've been working out a little bit, man. <laughs> right? Hey, man, I see you've been mowing the lawn out there, man. You do your thing, man. You, hey, keep it up, yeah, King. You, you do the good thing right there. Right. You show me an example how to be a man. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah, you hey, so, all the tricks. Yeah, you got to try to throw all the tricks out because you're trying to go to that party later, man. Right, but hold on, let's see what Moses asked the Lord after kind of, you know, talking him up a little bit. Verse 25, I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, that goodly mountain in Lebanon. Because remember, the Lord already told Moses he couldn't go for uh, losing his patience with Israel, man. And that's what happens when you lose your patience, you can lose your inheritance, man. Right? But Moses is trying to get it back. Let's see what the Lord said after he asked him. Verse 26, but the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. The Lord didn't even hear him, man. Right? And it says, and the Lord said unto me, let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. So imagine the Lord of the Lord, King King said, nah, don't talk about this again. I already said you're not going over to the promised land. And that's it, man. And I'll crush my ideas. How many people will continue doing the work after that? If the Lord came to you by night saying, you not you never get in the kingdom. Don't ever ask about the kingdom and don't I don't want to hear it in your prayers. Right? Hey, are you still gonna go out there and do the work for your people? Are you still gonna go out there and do the work, man? Let's see what happened. Verse 28. But charge Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, for he shall go over before this people, and he shall cause them to inherit the land which thou see. So the Lord said, Hey. Uh, uh, charge Joshua, train Joshua how to uh, lead this people. And he's going to go over to see the land, man, right? and inherit the land. Hey, you, you, uh, a lot of Jakes now could have done this, man. They could have been Moses. Man, I do. Man, man, after that, I ain't trying to charge nothing. Hey, guess what, Joshua? You, hey, if I can't see the land, you can't see the land, right? Hey, that's how that's how Jake is, man, right? I ain't doing none of that. I'm hey, man, look, I'm still right here. I can't see the land. Is what it is. He got figured out like I figured it out. That's how, that's how our people are, man. But let's see what Moses did in Deuteronomy chapter 5 and 1. This is Deuteronomy 5 and 1. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that you may learn them and keep and do them. Hold on. Moses still teaching Israel. Moses didn't stop. Moses is still teaching uh, our people, man. And then we read into this chapter, he's teaching the, uh, uh, the law, statutes, and commandments, man. The, the, uh, the Ten Commandments, as they say, right? He didn't get mad. He didn't say he didn't lose his patience. He didn't say, man, after, I ain't doing none of these things, man. Hold on. He's still teaching our people. And that's why Moses is still talked about to this very day, man, because he's a, one of the most humblest men. That's called having patience. The Lord said, you've not seen a promised land. And guess what? He's still out there teaching our people, man. You got to have the spirit of Moses, man. All right? Let me go to Ezekiel chapter 4 real quick. Or 9. All right? This is Ezekiel 4 and 9. Take thou also unto thee wheat and barley and beans and lentils and millet and fitches and put them in one vessel and make thee bread thereof according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon thy side. Three hundred and ninety days shalt thou eat thereof. And thy meat which thou shalt eat shall be weight twenty shekels a day. From time to time thou shalt eat it. Thou shalt drink also uh, water by measure the sixth part of a hen from the time to time thou shalt drink. Right? And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes, and thou shalt bake it with dung that coming out of a man in their sight. So the Lord told Ezekiel a recipe that he had to put together to eat before Israel, and one of that was man's dung, man. He said, and then gotta gotta put the damn cracker on top, and kind of put it on the bottom, kind of make it a dung sandwich, and I want you to eat it in front of the whole nation to show them their wickedness, man. Right? That's what that's what what if the Lord commanded you to do that, man. 
to make a duck sandwich and eat it before your people, right? And we're on verse uh, 13. And it says, and the Lord said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled braids among the Gentiles with our driving. They said, I, O Lord God, behold, my soul hath not been polluted. For from my youth up, even till now, have I not eaten of that which dieth of itself or is torn in pieces. Neither came there an abomination, uh, flesh, abominable flesh into my mouth. Then he said to me, Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread wherewith. So Ezekiel beseeching the Lord, he said, Lord, I don't, I please, I, I've never done that before. Right? He said, All right, all right, all right. Eat cow dung then. <laughs> all right? And he said, he, he just said, he said, Yeah, yeah, all right, fine. Eat cow's dung. But you still gonna go out there. You still gonna do that. And Ezekiel had to eat cow's dung, man. Right? And guess what? A lot of men would have paid. A lot of how many people would serve the Lord after that? How many people say, you know what? Hey, man, well, we out there eating cows don't dead if it be a sword of the Lord, right? A lot of people would have had that pain, but that Ezekiel had that. We got to strive to be like Ezekiel. You got to strive to be like Moses, man. Where the Lord commands you such a thing, you got to have a, hey, you got to have a mind to do it. All right, what you got? Uh, yeah, and like the brother going into, just because you, uh, just because you know you Israel, keeping them lost as you say commandments, that don't mean you always won't prosper. Yeah, we know it's going to be times you prosper through the spirit and power of the Most High. But again, that trying patience, I mean, uh, that, that that trying error, that's, that's again, that's what's going to build up your faith and your patience. Again, because the Lord he, the Lord may not answer your prayers. You may be going on a three-day fast, and the Lord don't answer one prayer. And you got to endure that. You got to what? You got to keep beseeching the Lord and keep beseeching and beseeching the Lord. Right? Because the Most High, he doesn't have to answer you. He just doesn't. Right, why? Because through his grace and his mercy, he answers your prayers. Let's get this in Matthew the 26th chapter. Matthew 26 and verse and verse number 38. It says, Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father. If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as my will, but as thy will. And again, there's no account of the Most High uh, answering Abishai's prayers. Imagine you're the son of man, right? You created everybody. You've seen the Most High face to face. You're the son of the living God. And he still don't answer your prayers, right? Again, we just read it. Uh, the brother just brought out how Moses, he couldn't answer to the promised land. Why? And again, that's, that's through uh, uh, patience and faith. Nevertheless, the Lord did the same thing with Yahushua, same thing with Ezekiel. He put him through trial errors to where it's only the most I can get you up out of it. Right? Reading on, it says, I'm going to jump down to verse 40. It says, he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter, what could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And sometimes you just got to say, you know what? Hey, so the most high, we all pray to the most high. Most couldn't enter the promised land. Okay, I'll pray to the most high. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's his will. I can't do uh, A, B, and C. All praises to the most high. Right, no matter if you uh if you exalted or if you're brought to a lower state, it's always all praises to the most high. Right, let's get the book of Second Corinthians, chapter 12, and verse number seven. Second Corinthians 12 and verse, I'm gonna start at verse 6. It says, For though I would desire to glory, I should not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be. Or that he heareth of me, and least I should be exalted above measure, though the abundance of the revelations was given me, so it was given to me a thorn in the flesh. So Paul he had Paul had a spirit that he couldn't get off, that he was never gonna get off, a thorn in the flesh. Right? It says what? Uh the messenger of Satan to buffet him, least I should be exalted above measure. So imagine uh you in the spirit. Are you reading? You praying? You fasting? You might. Then all of a sudden, the Lord just throw a spirit on you because you feel like you saying, "Do it, <clears throat> deal with it." And again, you, no no amount of uh, prayer and fasting can get the spirit off you. 
Some may that say, you know what? You know what I'm saying? Ain't no point. I'm just, I'm just following the shooting. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, just less. Right? Man's going to the Lord. I'm just right. less, man. Because the Lord got No, hey, Paul had to do that. Paul had to fight continually. And what did that do? That humbled him. Because he was being exalted above measure. And a lot of times, that's what uh, going through the fire does. It humbles you so you can know that you're still man. You're still dust and ashes. You're still nothing. Right? We still need the most high. Right? We know in verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. This is the same man that labored more abundantly than the rest of the apostles. Yahweh Shai literally talked to this man. Damn, Paul, Paul went through a lot of it, right? And guess what? This man still put a spirit on uh, Paul to humble him. So what a point, Paul couldn't even get the spirit off of him. Mm -hmm. So he won't be exalted. Verse 9, and he said unto me, it's like your, uh, verse 8, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And so the Lord said, hey, I'm not going to remove the spirit. My grace is sufficient <coughs> enough for you. Right? Same thing he did with Moses. Same thing he did with Yahweh Shah. It's through the grace of the Most High that we even hear. They all praise to the Most High. Right? Now, what if the Lord just brought us into the truth? And we got no increase. No matter how much we prayed and fasted. A lot of brothers just say, you know, I'm not increasing this thing, not for me. No, but guess what? Through that patience, you got to know, hey, all things are of the Lord. Through the Spirit. Right, you got it. Come, man, that's true. That's exactly what it is. You got to run after the Lord. Right? It's Song of Solomon 1 and verse 4. Draw me. We will run after thee. So hold on. So when the Lord brings you into this thing, you got to sprint after the Most High. A long period of time. You got to run after the Lord, man. I Meaning this ain't going to be easy, right? The, the Lord's going to try your patience, man. I mean, how do you know if you have patience? It has to be tested, right? How do you know if you have certain qualities? It has to be tested, man. A man can say, I can run a 4-4 right now outside, right, with, with Tim's on. Shit. I can run a 4-4 with Tim's on and none of y'all Israelites beating me. That's wild. That's wild. Well, how are we going to know if you can do that? Well, we're going to open the back door. You're going to put on these boots, right? And we're going to start you right there. You're going to have to end right there. And, right. Bro and brother's going to have a timer, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be tested, man. Right. The, oh, I got a lot of patience. I'm long-suffering. Moses, what? He bowed, he bowed to those 200 men, 250 men. I would have laid on my back, right? Hey, that's what Jake May said. Yeah. I would have laid on my back. Well, brother, you weren't there. And second right. of all, two people came against you, and you was ready to go home and open your trunk and do some things, man. Right. Right, that was two people. Imagine two hundred and fifty men renowned of the house of Israel, man. Right, you got to have, your patience has to be tested. You got to run after the Lord. Right, this Proverbs chapter twenty five and twenty eight. He that have no rule over his spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls, man. And the Lord said, if you don't have any patience, that means people can they can test you and they can do whatever they want to do and control your emotions, man. If you let people control your emotions. Guess what? You like a city that's broken down without walls, man. And if 